Good morning, everybody. I am trying to do this on Zoom. So hopefully you can hear me. Oh, look, 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 you can hear me. I think you can. Okay. So um great. Let me so all right. um, Pause this. Great. Make this quiet. Let me. So. Um, pause this. Great. Yeah. Okay. Send me some comments. Um, tell me. Um, tell me you can see me because I'm trying something new and I always need confirmation that someone can see me. If I could figure out how to see comments, that would be great. We'll see what happens. Oh, swipe left. Oh, yay. Hi, Kimberly. Swipe left. Perfect. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I wanted to show you a video at the end of this slide. So this is why I'm doing this on, um, on Zoom so I can show you the video. Every time I try to do stuff on Zoom, it doesn't work out on my Facebook Lives. So I keep hesitating, but we're going to make this work today. Um, I will do my best to keep track of the comments because the setup is a little different when I, like I can't see comments now, when I, um, oh, look, 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 I see comments. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning, Janet. Perfect. Okay, good Friday morning. Happy Canada Day for all the Canadians and happy Independence Day for all the Americans on there, on here. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Paula Hoger. I have been training dogs for over 25 years. In the time, I've had a number of different breeds. That's really helped me because dogs are all dogs. And um, I remember when I got my first breed, people were like, you need a trainer. My first breed was an Akita. <clears throat> Not a great first breed, but it worked out wonderfully. But people are like, you need a trainer that understands Akitas. And yes, having a trainer that understands your breed is helpful, but dogs are dogs. They all learn differently, even within your breed, or they all learn differently. But breeds all tend to have different, um, different behaviors that are typical of the breed, like Border Collie's herd, Akita's guard, Akita's are relatively quiet, German Shepherds are lungy barky you know, stuff like that. And understanding what your breed type is will help you. And that goes for a mixed breed too. Whatever your dog tends to look like is what breed type there is usually. So understanding that will help you understand what's going to happen. It gives you like a crystal ball. So I've owned a number of different breeds. I've had Akitas, I've had a Siberian Husky, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and I currently own two Border Collies. So, you know, I've had a Spitz breed, I've had a working dog, I've had a guard dog, I've had a sports dog, and now I have a herding dog. So it covered a bunch. The only thing I haven't owned is a terrier. Um, so I'm not going to make you a promise that training with me will give you the perfect dog because perfect is an illusion. Your dog is still going to be a dog with all their individual quirks, quirks and characteristics that come with that. That doesn't mean your dog won't listen, but you've got to understand they aren't gonna be a robot or at least the way I train, I want my dog to have their own personality within guidelines. Um, I don't wanna train a robot that's perfect because that means they can't possibly have independent thought or independent personality. My goal is to teach you to understand your dog and channel their unique personalities into a partnership of mutual understanding. Uh, good morning, Sherry. Okay, as always, please feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will answer throughout the live, so just ask away. If you are listening to the recording, let me know by using hashtag replay in the comments section. That way I can make sure I answer any questions you ask. For those of you on the call, say hello. I love to hear from you. Questions and comments allow me to tailor these lives to what you need. It's a great opportunity for you to get the info that's relevant to you right now. This week, I wanna hear if you have anything exciting planned for you and your puppies this summer. For us, it's a relatively quiet summer. Uh, Wick is not old enough to compete. It's been a really long time since I haven't had a competing dog. Uh, I compete in agility for those who don't know. 
I am pleased we'll finally get to go camping. We were going to camp last year and something happened. I can't remember what happened. We didn't go. It's been a long time since I haven't had, like, she's going to be, birth is in February. So she'll be a year and a half when we go camping. And it's been a long time since I haven't had a puppy that's camped multiple times before they're a year old. So it'll be interesting to start camping at that age. Um, and we'll also get to go as the COVID restrictions start to loosen, we'll get to go to our first agility trial, which is really important for my dogs because that is my, my goal is to compete in agility. So they have to get used to the environment that they're going to have to function in. And an agility trial, especially the big ones, can be a lot to function in. So good morning, Jan. Okay, so back to today's topic. Are you and your dog connected? What does that even mean? I remember when I started um, this type of training, everybody talked about relationship. I'm like, what does that mean? What is a relationship with my dog? I've now, to me, I've clarified it in my head to mean, it means voluntary attention. A dog willing, willing to voluntarily, without a cue, disengage from their environment and pay attention to me. And what I mean by disengage from their environment, their brain can fully be engaged on me and whatever I may ask them to do. So they can see something and still go, hey, what would you like? Checking in, um, being able to listen, being able to take their brain off that and put it on what I'm asking. That's the hard part. Um, you'll see many different training games out there to achieve this. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. For me, the ODR game has pr produced the most consistent results. For those who don't know about my ODR game, ODR stands for observe, don't react. For a link to my live on the ODR game, check out the show notes. I'll post it in the show notes. The first stage of ODR is giving the dog space to investigate the environment. The dog is expected to maintain a loose leash, but other than that, I want them to check out the environment until they no longer need to. This is really important. Let me explain. There's a lot of explaining today. Let me explain what no longer needs to check out the environment means. Sherry, with all the drive-through trials that have been going on, how are you training calming behaviors in preparation for the normal trial environment? So, um, my watch is talking to me now. Um, <clears throat> So the, for those who don't know agility, they've created what are called drive-through trials. Usually you show up at the show grounds, which could be like a fairground, and there's hundreds of people and hundreds of dogs, and we're all there, and we're there for the day, and the dogs are crated, and then they're out. There's lots going on. What they're doing now is drive-through trials, where you literally, you pull in, there's, I think, four dogs. So you park separate, you run your dog, you get in your car, and you leave. So there's not the socializing aspect. I have, I do a lot of training in the real world. So I go to places, Canadian, we have a Canadian tire. A lot of the Canadian tires allow dogs in, which is super nice. So there's, and um, so there's carts going by, people going by, guys stacking boxes, maybe a forklift driving by if you can get into a Home Depot, you know, stuff like that. And I work, can my dog focus on me in that environment? Then I might go, there's a skateboard park in Kempo. Can my dog focus on me? around the skateboard park. At first I start with super simple exercises and I'll show you um, at the end of the video, I'll, at the end of the Facebook Live, I'll, do, I'll walk you through a video with Wicca. Can she function or is she like, no, I need to watch the skateboarders. Herding dog movement, those little wheels make that funny noise that makes herding dogs go nuts. So can you function? And our skateboard park is in the middle of a big grassy area. So it's perfect. I can go as far away as I need to and get closer as her abilities get better. You go to a kid's playground, kids are running around playing, can your dog function there? So all the steps I take, so the day I get to a trial, they're like, we've done so much of this, I can function. And it will still be a challenge because it'll still be different. It might be dogs barking or anything like that. Um, the outside of an off-leash park is also, if I need to work dogs specifically, the outside of an off-leash park is also um, a great place to work. For Wick, I'm pretty sure people are gonna be the hardest challenge, not the other dogs. Okay, let me check comments. Good morning, Faye. Um, okay, 
Most dogs are fine at home, but out in the real world, they lose all ability to listen, the ability to think to engage their brain. Maybe this is your dog. They sit and stay for their meals. They come when you call them and they settle down when you ask it at home with nobody else in the house. Everywhere else, not so much. It's like you haven't spent any time training. And then you get super frustrated, which just makes it worse. This happens because the environment overwhelms them. This could be by getting them excited or stressing them out and making them uncomfortable. Depends on the dog's individual drives and sensitivities. What I see happening on a regular basis uh, when my clients send me in their videos, the dog is overwhelmed by the environment. The owner wants the dog to pay attention. So the owner spends a lot of energy trying to get the dog paying attention to them. They might use treats or a stern voice, sometimes a leash correction, begging and pleading, nothing works. The dog just focuses harder on the distraction. Sometimes the dog needs to watch the environment just to absorb it. A lot of times, especially with young dogs, usually by the time they're a little older, they've already have a habit of how to behave. But at the beginning, they just need to absorb it. You gotta give them the space to do this. When you play ODR with a puppy, at first, it's fascinating. You, you, you walk them to a spot, you stop, and they're just like, I need to look around. They're not cowering. They're just standing still or sitting, looking around. They just sit still and take it all in. Have you ever needed that moment just to absorb your environment? My personal example of this is taking the Holland Tunnel into New York City. I am not, my personality is not a freeze. My personality is go forward. So I don't freeze a lot. And this was one of those few times where I was like, I totally froze. There are 12 toll booths going into the Holland Tunnel from the, I think you're on the New Jersey Turnpike. And you go from 12 lanes to two in like 200 feet with billions of cars. So you, you don't see what's happening. You come through the toll booths and all of a sudden everybody's pushing and shoving to go into two lanes to go into the tunnel. Crazy traffic. When I came through the first time, I totally came through the toll booth and froze. I was just like, it wasn't fear. I love to drive. Big city traffic doesn't bother me. Tr driving does not stress me out. It was just overwhelm. Being in New York City, I instantly got honked. And then I was like, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. And I kept driving, got into the tunnel. But I remember how it felt. I just needed a minute to process, to take it all in, to get over the shock. And because I'm a go forward person, not a freeze person, when I got honked, it didn't increase my stress level and make me freeze more. It knocked me out and kept me going. But some dogs that push would have, I know people that that push would have made them go freeze even worse. And that would, that's what happens with some dogs. Sometimes your dog needs that minute. Let me check. No, nope, no comments. Sometimes your dog needs that minute. Doesn't mean there's fear necessarily, just a lot of stuff going on. If you look closely, they give us clues they are ready to function and ready to start engaging their brain and letting go of the environment. I love to watch puppies when their brain arrives. They will start to move. All of a sudden they go from just standing still, looking around to, oh, look at that. Or they'll start moving around on the leash or they'll start to sniff. And if you've done your foundation of um, starting to work with them at home, they will eventually look at you because there's reinforcement history for working with you, especially when on a leash. This is the moment when I know they are comfortable in this environment, when they are ready to focus on me. I reward the voluntary attention by giving them the opportunity to earn reinforcement. I do not reinforce them looking at me. I want them to engage the brain, not just to look at me. So I ask them for something super simple, something that I've already worked on at home. If you can't do it at home, then why in the world would you expect it in a new place? Ask for a behavior that the puppy is already comfortable with. Usually with young puppies, I take a step back and reward them for following me. If this is easy, I might play name game and color grab game. The net, my two foundation games that I play within 24 hours of the puppy being home. This is where I start. It's what I start with every single set of consults starts with these games. She teaching the puppy that coming when called is a fun game in this new environment. Think about it. 
you are training your recall in a new environment from the first minute they're there. Now, a lot of people will go somewhere new and immediately go for a walk, thinking that they will give their dog a chance to take everything in. I speak to so many people and all they wanna do is walk their puppy. Their puppy's barely been home 24 hours and they're out on the leash walking because that's what we've been conditioned that we're supposed to do with dogs. Good owners walk their dogs every day. Everything, so because they want to socialize, they allow them, they want them to take everything in. When you go for a walk, the environment is constantly changing. Because you are always moving, the puppy does not have the opportunity to get comfortable. Just be constantly bombarded by stimuli. Not giving the puppy the chance to make a connection with you. And worse, most people let their dogs investigate everything. So if the puppy is worried, they never get comfortable and their fear continues to grow because they keep being bombarded. If the puppy is confident, they're like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? And they continually get reinforced by the environment while you hold the leash, teaching them that ignoring you is the thing to do and pulling on leash gets them where they want to go. Most people that walk their dogs every day thinking that is, like I was saying, that is what good owners do. But instead you are building behaviors that you will spend your dog's life trying to fix. If you want a dog that can pay attention to you anywhere and everywhere, you want to start to build this from day one. Not teach your dog to totally ignore you and then go, by the way, now we're gonna work on attention. This will never work and lead to more and more discord between the two of you. Okay, so now we're gonna to try to show you a video. There's the video. Now I have to share screen. Oh, wait. It's not, I was prepared. Okay, hold on, stop sharing. Let me get back to you for, let me just, two minutes. There, I had the wrong video. Share screen. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna turn off the volume on this video and talk to you. So this is Wicca. She's my 11 week old smooth border collie. For those who haven't, oh wait, I'm making sure that she, okay. This is Wicca. She's my 11 week old smooth border collie for those who don't know her yet. Um, she's, so I've had her, I've had her uh, three weeks. She's been out, she's been about, she's done. Um, she's already been introduced to a leash. She understands what ODR means. So this is where we're at. This is a busy road. So traffic going by border collie. So I'm aware of hurting behaviors right from the beginning. And I'm standing there going, okay, what are you gonna do? So she's looking around, she's sniffing, she's not worried. Let me see if I can move that. She chooses to sit and look around. The sit is not what I'm rewarding there. Let me pause for a second. The sit is not what I'm rewarding there. What I'm rewarding there is staying on a loose leash while traffic went by, because that means her brain was still engaged with her body. She didn't go, oh, look, traffic, and start to pull forward. That is a good key on where your dog's brain is at. So she then turned and looked at me and went, that voluntary attention I was talking about, right? Oh, hey, how are you? How's it going? I don't care about that traffic. I want to work with you. So then I started doing simple behaviors. Wicca had a problem coming into my space. So me backing up was probably not going to work, adding the distraction of the environment. So instead, as I went to back up, I lured her. I showed her a cookie and drew her in. So there she got distracted by my son who's videoing and then went, oh yeah, yeah, we're working. There. I asked her to sit, I rewarded. Now watch this, she looks away from me in a second there and I waited to reward again. I wouldn't correct that distraction. I would just go, okay, you wanna look away at that, that's perfectly fine, but you have to come back and work with me, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wanna be rewarded. What I see a lot of people doing is as soon as the dog, looks away, they use a cookie to get them back, reinforcing the dog for looking away. So when she got comfortable in that chunk of grass, that was really close to the car. So we literally got out of the car and stood there. Then we started walking to the mall, hand on my body. I keep walking, nice regular pace. She goes, what if I sniff? I'm like, yeah, we're gonna walk. Hand on my body, 
keeps her, she understands to be comfortable, she just goes with me. See her, think about that little yellow spot on the pavement. Let me pause. So we walked 50 feet. There was not a lot going on. And then we got to this, which was gonna be for Wicca, this is her distraction because she loves people. So what I'm looking for is again, ODR. I stand there, the cards go by, anything she focuses on at this age, I reinforce. So you see her lock in on that person, she gets a cookie. Um, oh, and then the leaves go by. <laughs> so she forgets herself. Then she's like, oh yeah, yeah, loose leash. I remember that. Now she's like, okay, I can give up on the environment. So I'm like, okay, what if I step back? Here's the cookie. And eventually now people are going by and she's like, whatever. I'd rather work with you if people go by. So now I've created my 11 week old puppy who's allowing one of her favorite things in the world, strangers going by and goes, I'd rather work with you than pay attention to the strangers. So I'll stop sharing. Cool, that all worked. And then we'll go back to the live. Okay, so let me check if we have any questions. Nancy, I've been told not to take my puppy out for walks until he is 16 weeks old and vaccinated. I got it, I get him at nine weeks next month. So Nancy, I'm not sure where you live. So I want you to speak to your vet and ask what the chances, what the incidences of distemper and parvo are in your area. Um, <clears throat> In my area, distemper and parvo is quite low. I'm in a mall parking lot, a place where people don't walk their dogs on a regular, I'm not saying never, but on a whole, people don't walk their dogs in a mall parking lot. So I do take my dog out. I do not take my dog out to heavy dog traffic areas. I don't take my dog to a pet store. I don't let my dog walk into the vet. I carry them going into the vet. I wouldn't go anywhere near an off-leash park. Um, stuff like that. So I tend to take them to places that are less dog trafficked. And um, you got to remember distemper and parvo, you could bring it in on your shoes. So you could not take your dog, but you could walk through something. And if a dog pooped there and was cleaned up, but there could still be the virus there and you could walk in with your shoes. So you've got to really find out from your vet what your incidence of distemper and parvo is before you can decide what to do about your socializing. One suggestion that one of people on Facebook Live said was put your dog in a cart. So therefore your dog's not walking. So that's, um, that's great. Um, Nancy. Uh, hi, Michelle. Uh, yes, Michelle, ODR stands for observe, don't react and used to be called the post game. Um, we are supposed to be camping. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I took my eight and a half week old puppy camping five years ago, the last puppy I got. Um, again, I would assume most people camping are going to have vaccinated well cared for dogs if they're taking them camping. Uh, again, talk to your vet and make sure your incidences of distemper and parvo are low. Um, if they are, then once you're at the campsite, really, you don't know who was on your campsite before. You've got to you've got to make your own choices. This is what I do. I think the risk of not socializing. Um, I think the risk of not socializing is worth the risk of distemper and parvo because it is very low in my area. Sherry, Sherry went to Gabella's with Cian uh, at nine weeks, and he was con quite content in the cart. Yeah, I've done lots of puppies in shopping carts. How do you cope, <laughs> Kim? Okay, let me see. Hold on, I need to see more. How do you cope with people ooing and eyeing over your puppy, interrupting what you are doing, getting another sheepdog puppy in the fall and live downtown? So many people and lots of fuss made when they see a puppy. Kim, well, this is where I really liked COVID because people tended to give you more space. Um, you see in the video, there's one lady who takes a good long look and thinks about coming over and then decides not to. I tend to go to places that are not dog places. Supermarkets, people are thinking about groceries and they are less likely to stop. Uh, Wicca was super friendly, so I did allow people to greet her. 
if I have a shy puppy, I just don't know. I'm sorry, you can't touch the dog. Um, if they want to come over and talk to me, that's great practice. So I love them coming over and talk to me and practicing my dog sitting, standing, staying quietly beside me. And I'll reward staying quietly beside me while I chat with people. That's that's great. So you have to um, you have to sometimes be rude though. No, sorry, you can't touch my puppy. Don't touch him. And that's the other reason I won't go into pet stores because in pet stores, everybody runs over, all the staff run over and want to give your dog cookies. So if you've got that, oh, it's a person type of puppy, the last thing you want is them giving your dog cookies. Um, if you have that shy puppy, sometimes giving them cookies makes them more worried because they lean in. So yeah, that's what I do. Uh, making sure I've covered. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to be short and sweet this week. That is it. Um, I will be doing another two parts to this engagement, voluntary attention. Next week, we'll be working with um, <laughs> Kim, the cookies and the squealing. Yes, the cookies and the squealing. No pet stores. The cookies and the squealing drive me nuts. Um, <clears throat> I apologize for anybody who works at a pet store. Uh, so next week, we'll be talking about doing ODR with adult dogs, um, with a dog who possibly has already got a bad habit or um, has lack of socializing, how to work through, like Wicca right now is an adolescent, so she's very aware of her environment, very actually worried about her environment sometimes. So this has been a bigger challenge now than it was when she was a puppy. And then the following week, we're going to talk about Voluntary attention off leash. So make sure to write it in your calendars. The next two weeks sound pretty exciting to me. And I will see you next Friday at 11 a.m. Have a wonderful weekend. It's a long weekend for a lot of you. Hopefully your weather cooperates and you have a great time and we will see you next week. Thank you very much, guys.